All right, you want to solve uh, 5 times um, 2x minus 1 squared equal, let's say, um, let's make it 20. All right, so what are you going to do first? Nope, we talked about that last class period. We, you cannot distribute. You cannot distribute unless this is what exponent right here? A 1. That's not a 1, so you cannot distribute. Don't say that's that's 10x minus 5 and then take the square to both sides. You're going to get a wrong answer. You cannot distribute because that's a 2. This has to be a 1. Okay, so you're forgetting some things from last class period. So what you want to do is, is is get it in this form here. Some some expression squared equal a number. Okay? So so I gotta divide both sides by five. Right now I'm multiplying this this expression squared by five. The opposite is to divide by five. So you do that first. Divide by five. Divide by five. And when I divide by five, these divide out, and you're left with two x minus one squared equal four. Now that looks like this. So once that looks like this, what's that next property we're going to use? The square root, the square root property. So you can take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. Take the square root of both sides. I get plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus. So whenever you take the even root, now we're dealing with square roots in here, but whenever you take the even root, uh, square root, fourth root, sixth root, and so on, you're going to do the plus or minus. Huh? Here, square root of four, square root of four plus or minus square root of four. Yes, plus or minus square root of four. And so the square and the square root undo each other, so you get two x minus one equals plus or minus, and what does that become? Two. two. All right. So then, since since the square square root disappeared, this is now called a rational. Remember, rational versus irrational. So these are going to be rational solutions. So since those are going to be rational solutions, you're going to split it up as two separate equations. And so 2x minus 1 has to equal a positive 2. What else does 2x minus 1 have to equal? A negative 2. And so you solve these linear equations. So you're going to add 1 to both sides. Combine like terms, I get 2x equal 3. And so what does x equal? What does x equal? 3 over 2. Over here, add 1 to both sides. Combine like terms, I get 2x equal a negative 2 and a positive 1 is a negative 1. So what does x equal? Negative 1 half. Divide both sides by 2, you get negative 1 half. So those are your two solutions. So notice these are rational numbers right here. 3 has a rational number, and um, negative, that's a 2 right here, negative 1 half is a rational number. Okay? Now if you had this, so let's say number 2, uh, so you had 4 times um, 3x plus 5 squared equal, let's say, 8. All right, so what are you going to do? Divide by 4. So the 4s divide out. You're left with 3x plus 5 squared equal 2. That's the next step. Square root of both sides, plus or minus. The square and the square don't do each other. You get 3x plus 5 equal plus or minus the square root of 2. All right, now the difference between this and this step right here, right here, this one here, the this uh, plus or minus 2 is a rational number, so the solution would be rational. What is What kind of number is the square root of 2? Irrational. So since since you're left with the square root of two, you're gonna you're not gonna write it like this. I mean you could, but 
um, you're just going to do this. You're going to say subtract 5, just like that. 5 subtract 5 is 0. 3x is going to equal negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 2. And then what's the next step? Divide both sides by 3. Threes divide out, and there's your answer. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 2 divided by 3. So that's that's your answer in compact form. Now, in my math lab, they're probably going to ask you to write it as two separate equations separated by a comma. So you would say um, x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 2 all over 3. And what's the other? Minus square root of 2 all over 3, right? Now, if you want to write it as two separate fractions, you can as well, meaning this. Negative 5 divided by what? 3 plus the square root of 2 divided by what? 3, comma, negative 5 divided by 3, and then what's the next term? Square root of 2 divided by 3. So all those are, are uh, correct ways of writing the answer. I have a question. Yes? My number is irrational because it doesn't have a perfect square. No, that's, that's, that's uh, um, a radical. Um, So first of all, do you know what a rational number is? A rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction, like 7 over 3. So as a over b, where a and b are integers. Okay? So any number that can be written as a fraction, a over b, where a and b are integers, is a rational number. So the square root of uh, uh, 25, is that rational or irrational? Rational. That's rational because I can write the square root of 25 as 5 divided by 1. 7.2, is that is that rational or irrational? This is rational. 7.2, rational or irrational? Rational. That's rational. You learned that in the previous course and the reason is because because when you read, when you read 7.2, we call it 7.2, but mathematically it's 7 and 2 tenths, isn't it? So 7 and 2 tenths, this mixed number, I can write as an improper fraction. 10 times 7 is 70, 70 plus 2 is 72. And I wrote it as 72 over 10. So any, any decimal that terminates, see this terminates, or a decimal that repeats, like 7.6 with the bar. What is uh, 0.6 with the bar as a fraction? Do you remember? 0.6 repeating. What is that? What fraction is that? That's two thirds, guys. Two thirds. So a decimal that repeats is also what kind of number? A rational number. So if a number cannot be written as a fraction, then it's what kind of number? Now, when I say a fraction, I mean an integer divided by an integer, right? Because this right here is a fraction. But it's not a rational number. What kind of number is it? It's irrational because, because the square root of 6 is not an integer. If you put square root of 6 in your calculator, you can get a decimal that doesn't uh, terminate nor repeats. That's not an integer. So... So basically, all you have to remember is that if, when when you solve these when you when you solve these uh, um, quadratic equations by taking the square root, if your answer still has a square root in it, then it's going to be what kind of number? Irrational. Irrational. All right. Now let's look at number three. Okay. So let's see. Let's look at at this one. Um, 2x minus 5 squared equal a negative 25. 2x minus 5 squared equals a negative 25. What are you going to do? Square, square root of both sides. Because it's in that form, right? Some expression squared equal a number. So that's what that looks like. Once it looks like this, you can take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. 
take the square root of both sides. What else do I need though? Plus or minus. Don't forget that. You got to remember um, you do need a plus or minus there. And it's easy to remember. Just remember x squared equals 4. What number times itself twice is 4? Huh? 2 and what else? Negative 2. So hence you need a plus or minus, right? Okay. Because there's the number right here is a 1. Right here. Okay. You go back to the first two, you'll notice that that was not a 1 there. Okay. So um, the square and the square root of each other. So you get 2x minus 5 equal plus or minus. What's the square root of negative 25? 5i. All right. Now, so we're dealing with imaginary numbers now. So we're going to do it just like we did with the one that had a square root in it. We're going to bring the 5 over. We're going to add 5 to both sides. And so 5 and negative 5 is 0. So I get 2x equal 5 plus or minus 5i. And then what's the next step? Divide both sides by 2. And uh, so my answer is going to be 5 plus or minus 5i all over what? 2. Now in my math lab, they're probably going to ask you to write is this two separate answers. Solution separated by comma. So I get 5 plus 5i divided by 2. And what's the other? And you could also write as two separate fractions, each one. 5 over 2 plus 5i over 2 and so on. Okay? All right, and then one more with this. Suppose we had 2x plus 8 squared equals, let's say, 27. You remember what to do there? Square root of both sides. Plus or minus, right? Okay, so the square and the square root undo each other. So you get 2x plus 8 equal plus or minus the square root of 27. What's the next step? Yeah, so you got to determine is there a perfect square? First of all, 27 is not a perfect square. Uh, but is there a perfect square other than 1 that goes into 27? The answer is yes. What is it? 9. So go off the side right here and figure that out. So 27 is a uh, square root of 9 times 3. And that can be written as a square root of 9 times a square root of 3. And what's the square root of 9? 3. So square root of 27 is, is 3 square root of 3. I'm not sure why it's blurry over here. It just got blurry. And so, so I get... Um, 2x plus 8 equal plus or minus, and what does that become? 3 squared of 3. And so subtracting 8 from both sides. Oh, and is this rational or irrational? Irrational. It's irrational. So subtract 8 from both sides. This is 0, so I get 2x equal a negative 8 plus or minus 3. Square root 3. What's the next step? Divide both sides by 2. And so I get x equal negative 8 plus or minus 3. Square root 3 all over 2. So that's your answer. Now mistakes some of you are going to make is you're going to, you're going to try and reduce the 2 into 8. So this is an error right here. Go ahead and rewrite this over. All right, so so you cannot do this and say the answer is negative four plus or minus three squared of three. That's not correct because not only is two being divided into negative eight, but what else is two being divided into? Three squared of three. So if you did it correctly, if you broke it down as two fractions, you would you would have had this. This is correct right here. You had negative 8 divided by 2 plus or minus 3 squared of 3 divided by what? 2. And then negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. I can't do anything with this one. That's what you should have had. See, that's not what you have here. So you need to be careful when, how you reduce. Make sure you understand how to do that. Leave it as what? This? 
Yeah. No, you can leave it like that. Okay, I'm just trying to make you understand that some of you are going to do this. And you're going to be very upset. You can say, well, I had the right answer. I said, yeah, but you did something mathematically incorrect. I can't give you full credit. Yeah. Yeah, so separate as, right, because they're probably going to ask you to write it in standard form. So standard form means A plus or minus, um, well, this is not BI, but, but it'll probably ask you to write it as two separate fractions like this. I mean, try writing like this and see if they accept it, because you have quite a few chances of getting the answer. And then if they say it's incorrect, then break it down to two fractions. All right. Um, now, okay, so that was uh, using the square root property. So we solved quadratic equations using the square root property. Okay.